The types we've looked at thus far are known as the primitive types, or alternately the built-in types. These are the building blocks with which we can create our own types using the object-oriented programming model. In OOP, we use combinations of primitive data to describe more complicated items in our code, grouping this data together and providing a set of methods that can then act on this data in the way that we design. This is the model that we're building towards implementing in this course. Object types usually contain more data than we can realistically store in short-term memory, so we deal with them differently than the way our primitive data is stored. To accommodate this need, we place the values associated with the object into memory at the point it is created in our program. The location has an address, much like your house has an address, and that address value is stored in the variable used to reference that information. This way we can maintain the simplicity with which we store information in the machine without losing the power of creating our own types. A variable that stores the address of an object is known as a reference type. This kind of variable has very interesting behaviors that we'll need to explore once we've introduced the concept of methods, but we'll save that for another topic. For now, let's make sure we have the correct picture in our head. A primitive variable can be assigned a value, and that value can be stored directly in short-term memory. A reference type will never hold a specific value directly, instead holding the address of the information associated with the corresponding object in memory. In the examples that you see here, int x equals 10 means that we're going to store 10, the value, into a variable that's referenced in memory by the letter x. With an object type, like a string, we actually are not storing the text into memory. We're storing an address that then points to a location in memory in this case, a complicated hexadecimal string like you see there. Let's look at another example of this by creating a new object and printing it out to the terminal. Java has a reference type known as object, and it is the root of all user-defined objects. When we create an object, we do so declaring an object type variable and assigning the result of constructing a new object type. This is very specific notation that we will revisit when we get to our discussion of objects and classes, so consider this a preview. When the new operator is used, the program instructs the machine to establish the requisite amount of memory, and then provides the location of this memory. Let's print out this variable. Looking at this value, we see the type followed by an at sign, and the part that I highlighted and unhighlighted is the memory location. This could be different every time we run this program, because it's dependent on my own specific memory system. The values you see there are written in hexadecimal, which you learned about in our first topic. This abstraction is a terrific part of programming at a high level, since we don't need to know the specific value in order for our program to work. The object type, however, is not an extremely relevant type to work with right now, so we're going to introduce the string type more formally in the next segment.